So, with your permission, I'm going to break it down into halves. And spend about half my time talking about bankruptcy and half my time talking about financial wellness. First of all, let's talk about bankruptcy. Bankruptcy, of course, you know, I'm very excited about it because I've been doing it for the last 25 years and talked about it for, for hours and hours and hours. But, you know, I know you don't want to hear about all that stuff. But let me play with this idea for a second because I'm always curious as to where words come from. Where words come from. So I'm going to tell you about where bankruptcy comes from. Bankruptcy as a concept started back in biblical times. In Deuteronomy 15, 1 and 2, I see y'all writing this down. I better get it right. <laughs> Can you believe it? A lawyer that reads the Bible. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, in Deuteronomy 15, 1 and 2, it says that the longest time a debt can last is seven years. Lord's release. And at that time, every debtor, every creditor, every person that owes money, they shall release it. It's called the Lord's release. See, doesn't that sound kind of like bankruptcy? Yeah. And y'all take note of that because we're going to come back to that same quote later on in this talk. So we're going to have somebody give you the right answer. In fact, y'all will all shout. Now, then, in medieval Italy, back when they didn't have a united group, they had city-states. If any of y'all are fans of that, you know, you remember back when they had the family friendly things like the Medici's and the Borgias? Okay. Is that they had Fienze, Florence, they had Roma, they had Sicily, they had different areas. Anyway, as they were getting things together in ancient or medieval Italy, they wanted to get involved in arbitrage, they call it. What it is is just taking notes and exchanging them between one place and the next place. Well, they knew they could make money off of this, but there were prohibitions against it from the church. Anyway, is that they wanted to get involved in all these uh, promissory notes and, 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 and bills of lady and, and arbitrage to make money. But there were prohibitions with the church against that. So they said, what are we going to do? And somebody came up with the ideas, let the Jews do it. Now, the Jews could set up these places where you come in and trade money and whatever. The adult Jew, one of the few jobs an adult Jew could have was being a money trader. All this stuff sounds to me, doesn't it? <laughs> That's how all these things came about, was that the Jews were the money traders. And what they would do, the adult Jew would do, was take and sit behind the bench and do his trade. Bunker. Bunker. Now, is that if the adult Jew became insolvent, <coughs> then the local authority would get a big sledgehammer. And they would go into the marketplace and they take that sledgehammer to the bank. This process was called Banca Rota. Anybody else speak Spanish? Roto, roto is broken in Spanish. Rota is like a Latin for broken. So it meant broken bench. Well, the concept of this spread throughout Italy, throughout Gaul, France, across the English Channel. The banca became bank. The rota, instead of being rota, it was called Rupture. Mm -hmm. And so, instead of being broken bank, they call it broken, broken rupture bank. And so, from that time, it evolved into be called bank rupture. Mm -hmm. So now you know where it comes from. And to this day, we still use those terms because 
What's your name? Me, sir? Yes. Jafar P. Jafar? Yes. Jafar. If I want to say Jafar. All right, Earth, Wind, and Fire is in town. All right, let's get us some tickets to go down and see Earth, Wind, and Fire. Jafar might say, uh, I can't go. And I'll say, why? He's going to say, I'm broke. See where that comes from? <laughs> from the bank rub sheet, from the broken bench. And we still say that nowadays. It used to be, I'm going to date myself on this one. Let me see if anybody in here is as old as me. No, you know me. But that's all right. <laughs> Some of y'all can ask your fathers and grandfathers about this one. Is that um, it used to be when you didn't have any money, you didn't say that necessarily you were broke. You said that you were busted. busted. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, you have dated yourself now. <laughs> no shame in that game. I'm bad to be here. That's right. He said we were busted. But you can see how that came from a broken bench. Bank. Broken bench. So that's where the term bankruptcy comes from. That's how we have it nowadays. And that's why we use it. It's a fabulous program. What it will allow you to do oftentimes is to take honest people who've got it over their heads for one reason or another and get them out of that debt. Now, the wisdom to that comes from the Bible, but also the wisdom comes as a practical matter. If you did not have the ability for good people to get themselves out of debt, they would just sit down and put their hand out and beg. Because they said there was no way, there was no reason for me to go ahead and do anything else because there was no way for me to get past all this. So what it allows us to do is to take good, honest people, get rid of those debts, and get them started all over again. Now, in the world of bankruptcy, we have, oh, by the way, the book of bankruptcy is part of, the, uh, part of the U.S. Code. And one of the things in the U.S. Code, the law, that makes sense. Because in the book of bankruptcy, which is Title 11, it's divided up into chapters. So, you have all these different chapters in bankruptcy. But the ones we're going to talk about this evening, there is chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, like chapter 8 deals with, you know, this policy is a file bankruptcy, you know, and different kinds of things you hear from every now and then, but you use it on apply to you and to us. The ones that apply to you and us that you'll hear about are chapter 7. Oh, you want to sing it to me? Go ahead, sing it. Let me hear. <laughs> chapter 7, 11, and 13. All right. Now, chapter 7 is a liquidation. That means that you're going to throw up your hands, walk away from all your work. Sometimes it's called a fresh start, a straight bankruptcy. Now, that makes sense. If you just got to the point where you just said, bump all this, let me go ahead and let it go. Sometimes you got to back up to get a running start. <laughs> That's what chapter 7 is all about. The only problem with chapter 7 is that when you get rid of all your debts, 555, five, five, thank you. When you get rid of all your debts, you get rid of all your assets too. So if you got stuff, chapter 7 may not be the way to go. Like I had one lady come in and she had a piece of property that was worth about $50,000. And she had it free and clear. And she wanted to file bankruptcy. Well, she wanted she could get rid of a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt, but she would probably lose that five thousand fifty thousand dollar property. So sometimes it's not so good, and that's why you have us bankruptcy attorneys in order to kind of guide you and take you by the hand and see what's best for you. Chapter eleven is a reorganization for a large business concern, like uh, Delta went into chapter 11, you see when the large business concerns, usually it doesn't apply to individuals, unless they have like 50, 11 houses and all kinds of things happening. 
Most times this applies to corporations. Chapter 13 is when you put together a plan by which you pay back creditors over an extended period of time. That's when we corral everybody. Get them off your back. You are getting ready to lose your house to foreclosure. You're getting ready to come over and pick up your car out the, out, out, out the driveway. The IRS just garnished your check, levied against your check. Those kind of things we're dealing with. And of course, for us fellas, you know it doesn't apply to us because we're good men, but for the fellas with all that child support and everything, <laughs> you have to follow that stuff, see, in order to get all that stuff paid. All right? But these are the kind of things that apply for chapter 13. Yes. So what I'm going to do is stop here and take any questions on the, on the bankruptcies, and then we'll move on to financial wellness. There's a question. Natasha, right? Okay, Natasha. Help me out. Um, how many times can you file a chapter 7 in the bloodstream time? Good question. How many times can you file a chapter 7? The law says that you can file a chapter 7 once every 8 years. So that means that from the time that you file, like if you file today, you have to go 2017, 2018, 2019, all the way for eight years before you can file Chapter 7 again. They have played with this, and so you may have heard in the past it was six years, and then they bumped it up to seven, and then they bumped it up to eight. So presently it's eight. Next question. Yes, ma'am? Okay, and how would the Chapter 7 affect your credit versus the Chapter 13? They both ruin your credit. It's just how long. Chapter 7 will stay on your record for 10 years. Chapter 13 stays on your record for 7 years. What does this really mean? This means for all the country folks in here, okay? Y'all know what a polecat is? Can anybody tell me what a polecat is? Okay, okay. I got, I got a few people from back there, okay. Is that a polecat is a skunk. Have you ever been around somebody that got sprayed by a skunk? Yes. Well, for all you city folks, <laughs> when you get sprayed by a skunk, you smell really, really bad. They say that you have to take your clothes and burn them because they will never be any good anymore. And you got to take several baths, and then maybe after a week, they let you back inside the house. That's the way bankruptcy is. Is that once you file bankruptcy for about the first two years, you have been sprayed by that skunk. <laughs> now, is that do people get houses? Sure, they do it. In fact, some people do it the next week. But you usually have to have a little bit more money down. A little bit. In other words, the deal that you're going to be offered after you come out of a bankruptcy is not going to be a very good deal. You're not going to get that zero dollars down and zero percent interest. You're going to get $2,500 down and 25% interest. So that's why you have to be very careful because they will see you coming. Next question. I have a question. You said with the seven, if you have any assets, you have to liquidate? Not necessarily. Okay. There are a whole bunch of different Scenario. variables and permutations. Okay. For example, a lot of people keep their house because their house doesn't have any equity in it. So if you're upside down on the house? If you're upside down, you keep your house if you want to, okay. if it makes sense, and keep on paying it. Okay. Same thing with your car. If your car is upside down, you keep it. But however, if those houses, those cars, life insurance policies, whatever, if they have a whole bunch of equity in them, above your exemptions, and the exemptions are just a list of things which they allow you to keep in Georgia, then there's a possibility that you could, live, you could lose those. That's why you want to talk with an attorney to make sure you don't step where you're not supposed to step. There are certain debts which are non-dischargeable, such as student loans, <laughs> such as child support, <laughs> such as all maybe relatively new taxes or something you can get rid of. But things like that, alimony, you can't get rid of. Folks, let me move on to financial wellness. How this ties into what we just talked about is this. 
I do bankruptcy work. Did it for, or doing it for 25 years. Did over 4,000 cases. The thing I've found is that certain things kind of repeat. I take people and get them out the financial quicksand. The question comes is that how can we avoid that quicksand to begin with? And that's what we're talking about, financial wellness. All of us working people are getting squeezed. Doesn't matter what color, doesn't matter what age, it doesn't matter what station in life. We are all getting squeezed. <coughs> Let me tell you why that is. When I bought my first car, once again I'm dating myself, it was a 1972 Chevrolet Vega. The worst car ever made. <laughs> See, Miss Bonita will tell you, because I said back in that day, I had this 1972 Vega, and I bought it in Pennsylvania, and it had black interior seats, and the back windows didn't go down, and it didn't have air conditioning. And I went from Pennsylvania, where that's not so much a problem, to Houston, Texas. <laughs> what was the same we used to say was uh, 260? Roll the two windows down to drive 60? <laughs> that was the air condition that I had, all right? Anyway, when I did that, the financing was for two years. Car was $1,900. It was like $95 for two. So the question is, how do we adapt our dance steps to the new financial challenges? What we're going to do is we're going to cover this in pretty quick fashion. But we're going to cover three things. We're going to cover an exit strategy to your mortgage, which is also applicable to car loans, student loans, and the like. Two, we're going to stretch your mind with some new ideas. And three, how to hold on to your money and have that money work for you and your family. Now, I've written a book called Don't Be a Happy Meal for the Banks. The title was inspired by a quote from Senator Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren said, if you are not at the table, you're probably on the menu. <laughs> Here's the center of what I'm talking about today. You want things from the banks and financing companies, like houses, cars, credit, entertainment, and such. And I, I want you to have those things. But there is no reason that you should pay the banks and finance companies any more than what you absolutely have to pay. We're all together on that? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm going to be your attorney this afternoon. Your attorney, of course, is a person that acts on your behalf. So if it's okay, I'm going to make this whole talk about y'all. Okay? It's going to be all about you. Nobody else. That's you. And uh, also, with your permission, I'm going to act like your uncle. Lowell, you got an uncle? Yes, sir. All right. thing about uncles is, is that you always have an uncle who always says, sport, come over here. Let me tell you what the deal is. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about what the deal is also. Okay? We're going to break it down. In order for us to adapt to this new rhythm in this economy, we're going to have to make some new ideas. We're going to have to get some new ideas. There's a philosopher named Ralph Waldo Emerson. Mm -hmm. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, the mind once stretched by a new idea will never return to its original dimensions. Mm -hmm. I like that. You like that? Mm -hmm. yes. Here's an example. During slavery times, millions of slaves were brought from Africa into Brazil and they put us on plantations. We didn't like to work on those plantations and we just waved it off into the jungle. So many of us waved it off into the jungle that we set up towns, little shanty towns. They were called quilombos. These things grew to such an extent 
that every now and then the Portuguese would get their cannon and they would drag them off into the jungle and they recapture the slaves. And they put us back to work. But one thing they found is that a slave that had a taste of freedom was never a good slave that had ever been. So we're going to do a deal with some ideas this evening so that once we go through this, you won't go back to the old way of doing things. Carter G. Woodson. Y'all know who Carter G. Woodson is? Yes. He's the guy that's responsible for a Black History Month. He's an educator of this story. He wrote a book called The Miseducation of the Negro. You've heard about that book. Yes. Now, most of y'all have heard about the miseducation of Lauren Hill. But we won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lauren Hill got it from Carter G. All right? Yeah. Carter G says something that's very important that I want to leave with you. Carter G says, there, he says, we can achieve everything that we want through education. Mm -hmm. And I think you all agree with that. But he said, not just any education. He said there are two educations. There is one that you are given, and there's one that you give yourself. That's right. Mm -hmm. Be aware that the one you are given is what makes you important and useful to those other people. Same. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that, because they provide us with jobs and we feed our families. But there is another education that you can have that makes you good to people. Yes. That's right. The things that we're talking about this evening, bi-weekly instead of monthly. In other words, forget about what people are offering you. Do the things that are good for you. Forget about having the HBO and no IRA. Thank you. That's good for HBO, that ain't good for you. I'm saying it. <coughs> and these are the kind of things that we want to bring out to make it like you are those slaves that went to the Kilau Moses and get recaptured, that you're never going to be a good slave again. <laughs> Booker T. Washington had this thing. He, he said, he told a story. He told a story about this ship that was coming in, and these two ships met, open sea. And the ship flashed to the other ship, water, water, we die of thirst. Ship flash back. Drop your buckets where you are. They said, come on now, stop messing with us. Water, water, we need some water. Yeah. Drop your buckets where you are. They went back and forth like that. So after a while, they said, okay, we'll drop the buckets. They dropped the buckets, came up with sparkling clear water from the Amazon. Mm -hmm. They had wandered into the mouth of the Amazon. Uh, he said, I only say that to you is that you have everything you need right now, right here. I'm going to leave y'all with one poem. And I'd love for you to say this with me. Y'all say this with me. Repeat after, repeat after me. And of course, it will be part of my book. Commercial. Right back there is our book for sale. It's called, Don't Be a Happy Meal for the Banks. All the things we talked about are in here, and a whole lot more. 